Okay, next question three. After the outage from customer site one was, was resolved, network monitoring has indicated that the circuit from, X, uh, from router four to XR1 is no longer being used for load sharing to and from customer site one. Resolve this so that traffic from router six to seven is load shared on both router four and five circuits to the MPLS provider. Okay, so let's look at what is the current path. Okay, the question is basically saying that router six needs to load balance to seven. So when we look at the diagram, six is on the left, seven is on the right. What we're trying to do is go both this direction and this direction before we get over to seven. Okay, so let's look at six. And show IP route 7777. Okay, we have a route to it through XR1. Okay, and actually, you know what? I think I forgot to bring that other interface back up. Let me go back to router one. Or no, actually, uh, router five, I think I shut it down. Show IP interface brief. Okay, and you have to be very careful with this. If you shut interfaces down for troubleshooting, make sure you bring them back up, right? Okay, so on router six, let's show IP route 7777. Okay, so here is the issue. So router six has a route to 7777. It's an inter-area route, okay, which is reachable via router one. When that route to router one is down, uh, when, uh, when that link to router one is down, the issue is that we're learning a, an external route the other way. Okay, remember we talked about in the uh, OSP path selection order that regardless of what the metric is, regardless of what the administrative distance is, you're always choosing an intra-area route over an inter-area route and then over an external route. So the issue here is that we can't load balance between an inter-area route and an external route. Okay, we talked about how does that encoding work. It's based on the OSPF domain ID. Okay, so we would need to look at the, the VPNv4 update. Where is this coming from? Okay, so let's look back at the VPNv4 routes. Okay, so we need to look at router one and XR1 here. Again, router one, let's show BGP, VPNv4, unicast for all tables. I'm looking for 7777 slash 32. Okay, same thing from XR1's point of view. Okay, show BGP VPN v4 unicast. And let's see, what is that distinguisher? Is 2 colon 2. Okay, so we'll say for RD 2 colon 2, the prefix is 7777 slash 32. Okay, so we have uh, two available routes. The first one is the best route. Okay, best route here. Okay, next thing I want to look at is uh, did the OSPF domain ID get encoded into the extended communities? In this case, it did. Domain ID 0 by 5, okay, this number. Okay, if we look at this compared to the local process, let's say uh, show IP OSPF. And show OSPF. Let's see, does it show it there? So I'm not 100% sure where you can verify this in XR other than the config. In regular iOS, it just shows up when you say show IP OSPF. So let's look at what is the domain ID of the route and what is the one that we have programmed here. Okay, so show BGB VPN v4 unicast for that route. And this is the domain ID. Okay, let's say show run router OSPF. Uh, the issue is that the numbers are transposed. 
This one is 6402. This is the one that's inside the route, but that's not the one that's, that's configured here. Okay, so again, the, the understanding of this section comes from the fact that the domain ID controls, if the route was intra-area on the other side, and the domain ID matches, I'm going to encode it as an inter-area route, as a type 3 LSA. So the issue here is that the domain ID does not match, so I'm encoding it as an external route. Okay, another solution for this, so I could change XR1's uh, domain ID to match the prefix in order to, uh, to get it to work. The other thing that I could do would be to go to router 1 and change its domain ID so that it doesn't match as well. Okay, the end result then would be that both of the prefixes going to router 6 would be OSPF externals. Okay, so either way would work. Okay, what I'm going to do here is, is change the XR box to match what the route has. Okay, so the route has domain ID, domain ID type 0005, and then the value of it is this. Okay, so next let's go back into the customer network. Okay, so like on router 6, show IP route 7777, now we see both routes. Okay, the one originated by router 11, so XR1, is now an inter-area. Okay, because the key is that the domain ID in the VPN v4 route that was set by the other end of the network is matching my local domain ID. And in regular iOS, the domain ID is inherited by default from the process number. So if you use router OSPF1 everywhere, you have domain ID 1, but in XR it has that different behavior. It does not encode the domain ID by default. 